Daniel Dubai is fighting David Hu. How? I think it is actually this Saturday. It'll be on BT and Box Nation. I think it starts in Box Nation at 7 o'clock and it starts in BT at half past 7. Um, who is da Daniel Dubai? Well, he's a really big British prospect right now. Frank Warren has snapped him up. I'll just go over some of his achievements first and why there's some people making a big deal out of this guy already. I think he started boxing when he was nine years old. He he quit high school and then just dedicated his life to boxing, I think when he was 15. He won the national school championships twice. He won a, two junior ABA titles. He won a couple of international tournaments. He won the Great Britain Senior Championships as well. He's had 75 amateur fights. Uh, his amateur record was 69 wins with only 6 losses. He turned down an opportunity to be in the Tokyo Olympics so he could turn professional at 19 and he's, he's still 19. He's only had 2 professional fights so far against 2 no-hopers really. The same way they build up anyone's career. But he's fighting this David Howe guy next, and it's his, well, it's his toughest opponent so far, but he's probably likely going to knock this guy out in the first round still. And you're not getting to see much of his talent right now as a professional, because he's not fighting good enough competition yet. But when he starts fighting guys maybe in the top 100 or top 50, we'll get a better idea. But this uh, David Howe is only 311 in box strike right now, but this is his best opponent he'll be fighting this Saturday. I would be watching it myself, but I'm away this weekend, and I'm not going to be able to do it unless I can find out how I can watch it on my iPad. Um, yeah, he thinks he can be world champion by the time of the next Olympics anyway. Frank Warren obviously has a lot of faith in him. Frank Warren's had him in sparring guys like uh, Tyson Fury, uh, Huey Fury. Um, he's, been, he's also been sparring Anthony Joshua. Joe Joyce as well. The rumours are that he hurt and dropped some of these people. Actually, there's rumours he hurt and dropped all of them, but uh, I can't confirm any of them. It's just rumours. And just, like I say, it's just sparring as well. Here's a quote from what he said about sparring Anthony Joshua. It was a good spar. I equipped myself well. I stood my ground. I hit back just as hard as he hit me. It was a competitive sparring. And he says, with sparring all these guys as well, um, they don't hold back against him and he doesn't hold back against them. It's proper sparring, he says. He has ambitions to win lots of little titles before he gets to the top. If he gets to the top, of course. He's talking about the English title, the British title, the Commonwealth title. He wants to win a European title as a professional as well. Uh, probably aiming to do a, a international WBC title or, or silver WBC title. He says he wants to win a lot of belts. Uh, it's just like I say, he's still 19. He stands at six foot five, 70 inch reach, and at 19 he already weighs 232 pounds. The only fights he's had so far is against Marcus Kelly, which was just awful, and a guy called Blaise Mendro. Just no hopers, really. Uh, right now, he seems to be fighting about every 20 to 25 days. He's, uh, he's He thinks he holds a world record for press-ups. He says he can do 6,000 press-ups in three hours. This video I'm showing you right now is uh, a good fight, a good amateur fight with Daniel Dubai and Solemn Darcy's who is a he was an English or a British silver silver medalist as well. And you get a see a a bit of a taste of how good this guy actually is. He has quite a good jab. Uh, he's quite powerful. How powerful he is we don't really know yet. Um I think he looks like a really good talent from what I've seen of him so far, from limited professional fights and what I've seen of him as an amateur as well. Um he looks like he could be a top ten fighter. He really does. Of course he could have weaknesses. He could be David Price. He could get knocked right out by the first tough guy he actually comes up against. It happens. Maybe Audley Harrison as well. He just um, 
he was a good amateur but didn't turn out to be a great professional either. So it does happen, but um, from what I've seen on him so far and realising he's only 19, he's still progressing, it's going to be a few years or two or three years yet until he's actually fighting at the top level, that um, yeah, I really can see this guy being a top 10 fighter two or three years down the line. Uh, I really can, maybe not two years, but about three years down the line I really can see him being that way. I mean, Dylan White's a top 10 fighter right now, doesn't have the same skills as this Daniel Dubai. He's um, not got the same amateur background as Daniel either. Dylan White doesn't seem to have the same amateur background. Uh, doesn't look like he has the same skills either. I mean, this guy looks more skilled than Dylan White already. And he's bigger than Dylan White. And he's athletic looking as well in the ring. So yeah, this guy could really be a top 10 fighter. This could be... I mean, this is really a future contender I think I'm looking at right now. So I've just shown you this video of his amateur fight, uh, just to give you a, a good idea of how good this guy was. I think this is maybe about a year ago now, this uh, this fight. But uh, you can't really learn, you can look him up his professional fights, but uh, you really can't tell much from him because he's fighting, it's pretty much a, a one-sided beatdown, both of these fights, a first round knockout and a second round knockout. But um, I'm impressed from what I'm seeing from him so far. Um, just like I say, I won't be able to watch his next fight until I get back uh, from holiday next Monday. And I'm expecting a first round knockout from him as well. So I just thought I'd give you a heads up on this guy, let you know what this Daniel guy is all about. But uh, Frank Warren is looking at him as his main cash cow in the future. A bit like Eddie Hearns has looked at Joshua that way when he was coming up. So... There's going to be a lot of money getting invested in Daniel. He'll be getting the best sparring possible. He already is against people like Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Huey Fury, Joe Joyce. Daniel, Joe Joyce won, he should have won an Olympic gold medal last year in the Olympics. And Daniel Dubai looks far more impressive than Joe Joyce does. Uh, Joe Joyce, yeah, he throws a lot of punches, but he doesn't look like he has a, the skill or technique of Daniel Dubai at all. So... I mean, what do you think of this guy? Do you think this guy could go quite far? What do you think of this video of him in this, this uh, amateur boxing match here? Richie, that short left underneath the elbow to the body. It's a sickener. That, that that's a sickener. Yes. And he hasn't been the same since, Solomon. For the last minute, he's not been the same. He's just getting manhandled slightly. <laughs> Solomon doesn't know, sorry, he doesn't know enough, Daniel, to realise that he could have put the pressure on. That comes with experience. Experience, Steve, yeah. What a group of riches that we have. Joe Joyce, still an amateur. Fraser Clark, still an amateur. Either one of those two could have been in the Olympic final. And these two also in the mix. It's prized territory, it's rich territory. Another round, Dubois wins it. Solomon doing absolutely the right thing. Just getting picked off occasionally with those big, big jabs. He pulling in that GB corner. He'll be fairly pleased with his man's work. Let's have a look at these scores. No. So one score has gone. Judge B has gone. Judge, one score has gone to Dubois. And then, and then two of the three in that round went for Solomon Dakers. Yeah. It is all on the final round. All on the final round. He's going to have to be busier. He's going to have to go searching. He's going to have to go chasing. You can't have off nights when it's the elite championships, Richie. Well, no, you can't. You because, can't. It's that simple. You know, Dakers knows that if he gets the, the win here, then he gets invited up to GB. Absolutely. And he's in the mix. And if, and if Daniel has a defeat, he knows he's placed under a bit of extra scrutiny. In this situation, you need your heavyweight, your boxer, anyway, to go out and give it all, to leave it in the ring. Dakers himself now, he's trying his hand there with that jab. 
It's not a bad shot, it's a fast shot himself. He tends to throw it from the waist, so it's hard to detect when he does throw it, Dakers. But by dropping his hand there, he gets caught. It's better from Dubois. He's this got, is, this he's is what got he to needed. push him back, which he's got to push him back. A bit of urgency. You know, it's not a case of just showing up and getting the title. It's not a case of just showing up and staying on the GB team. There's a lot at stake. Daniel needs to put his foot on the on the pedal and take it to Solomon Dakers. Put him under pressure. By the way, Rich, good quality contest this. Good Absolutely, quality yeah. technical. Brilliant technical contest for two big raw super heavyweights. And you don't see him hanging on DST there no, using the jab. Fantastic. Not falling Good over, stuff. not breathing out of their proverbial. No. Absolutely quali quality technical super heavyweight contest. The bar's just doing the better work now, Steve. Yes, he is because he's, he's probably waiting a little bit too long. But and you don't need more, only three or four. That can change a fight. Three or four yeah. punches can change a close fight, Richie. Absolutely. <laughs> Remember the Wally Amateur Boxing Club in the late 80s. I think they produced the um, ABA finalist in Johnny Shakespeare. Do you remember all those do, years do, ago? Big lump, Big yeah. John. Yeah, Big John, coached by Red Steel. Not a lot in the round again, Steve, is there? No, there's right. not a lot in the round, Richie. And I said to you, with 80 seconds to go, this can be decided by two or three big clean punches. Both of them need to let their hands go. Not just one, both of them. Dubois did the better work in the earlier part of the round, but now Dakers is coming back into it. This is, this is wafer tight, wafer, wafer tight. A shot again there. Oh, belting shot from both boxers, Steve. Go for it here. If it was the World Series, Richie, then Dakers are going to get stopped in the next round. If the rounds in boxing were three minutes, ten seconds long, he might have got stopped. He didn't. You work to the rules. No good saying if it was 101 metres, I would have won the race. And now, I've got to be honest with you, that is way for thin. It would not surprise me if there's a bit of a shock here and the kid that came back with two knockouts and a gold medal from the Tama tournament would not surprise me at all if he were to lose this this evening okay he's Steve, a baby yeah. of 19 it wouldn't surprise me i think he just did enough in that you last think round he just did enough? Yeah, i think he just did enough I'm to not win sure it about the, the last 20 seconds yet i'm not sure about the 80 seconds before that it's going to be way for thin it's going to be a split we're going to see what's happening Good contest, though, Rich. Yeah, tremendous. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner as the result of a unanimous decision. Red corner, Dubo!